Hello everyone. Welcome to another module of cardiovascular embryology. In this section, we are going to discuss about formation of atrial septum, ventricular septum and related disorders. Okay. Let's talk about atrial septation. In the atrial septum, the septum primum grows towards the endocardial cushion narrowing the foramen primum. Okay. So let me just zoom into this diagram and show you. This is the septum primum which grows towards the endocardial cushion. This is the endocardial cushion. So the septum primum grows towards the endocardial cushion and there is a formation of foramen primum. This is called as the foramen primum. Is it clear? In the next step, the foramen secundum forms in the septum primum and the foramen primum regresses. Okay, The foramen primum regresses. That means the foramen primum disappears eventually. So what happens is when the septum primum grows towards the endocardial cushion, there is a formation of another foramen by the separation which is called as the foramen secundum. And eventually, with time, the foramen primum regresses and the septum primum is joined to the endocardial cushion. Am I clear? Now, let's talk about the third step. The septum secundum. Till now, we had learned about the septum primum, foramen primum and foramen secundum. In the third step, the septum secundum is formed on the right side, on the right side of the septum primum as the foramen secundum maintains right to left shunt. We all know that there is a shunt in the heart. Okay, So the foramen secundum maintains this right to left shunt. I'll show you in this diagram there is a formation of this, this blue color called as a septum secundum and there is a shunt which is foramen secundum. Okay. These are the first three steps. The first step was the septum primum growing towards the endocardial cushion. The second one was the regression of foramen primum and formation of foramen secundum. In the third step, there is a formation of septum secundum. Now let's talk about the fourth step. In the fourth step, the septum secundum expands. That means it grows downwards and covers most of the foramen secundum. The residual foramen is called as the foramen ovale. This is very high yield. Okay. In this diagram, it's very clear. This is the, the blue color is the septum secundum, which grows towards the endocardial cushion. This is the endocardial cushion, correct? This is the, between the two green lines, this is the foramen secundum, which is majorly covered by the septum secundum. Okay. So there is a, another shunt which is formed called as the foramen ovale. This is the foramen ovale between the septum secundum and septum primum. So foramen ovale is formed between septum secundum and septum primum. Is it clear? Now let's talk about the fifth step. The remaining portion of the septum primum forms the one-way valve of foramen ovale. So let's go to the fifth diagram. There is a degeneration of septum primum on the above side, on the upper side. Okay. The foramen ovale closes when the infant takes its first breath. When the infant takes its takes the first breath, the foramen ovale closes. Okay. So let's reread the fifth one. The remaining portion of the septum primum forms the one way valve of foramen ovale. So the valve of foramen ovale, valve of foramen ovale is formed by the septum primum. This is the septum primum. Okay. Now, what are the sixth and the seventh step? The septum primum closes against the septum secundum. As I told you, during the first breath of the infant, there is an increase in the left atrial pressure as compared to the right atrial pressure. This we discussed in the fetal circulation model, right? So 
during the first breath where uh, during the first breath the septum primum closes against the septum secundum and there is a sealing of the foramen ovale this foramen ovale gets converted to fossa ovalis the remnant of foramen ovale is called as fossa ovalis is it clear the septum secundum and the septum primum fuses during the infancy or the early childhood forming the atrial septum this is the most important statement hence the atrial septum is formed by fusion of septum secundum and septum primum by closing of foramen ovale now what happens when this foramen ovale does not close that is called as patent foramen ovale that means the foramen ovale doesn't close it is caused by the failure of septum primum and the septum secundum to fuse correct because the septum primum and the septum secundum is responsible for the formation of correct the atrial septum so when the septum primum and the septum secundum does not fuse there is patent foramen ovale these are mostly left untreated but they can lead to paradoxical emboli that means 25% of the cases leads to paradoxical emboli that is a venous emboli the venous thromboemboli which enters the systemic atrial arterial circulation okay this can also occur in atrial septal defect i hope i'm clear so this is all about the septation of atria that is atrial septum how is the atrial septum form the septum primum grows towards the endocardial cushion the foramen secundum is formed then there is a formation of septum secundum the septum secundum grows downwards there is a closing of fossa ovale uh, foramen ovale which leads to formation of fossa ovalis is it clear okay now let's go to ventricular septation correct so how are the ventricle separated and how is the ventricular septum formed in the first step let me just read it the muscular interventricular septum is formed and there is a opening called as the interventricular foramen okay i'll just explain it through this diagram this is the muscular interventricular septum this part okay and hence there is a formation of interventricular foramen now these two structures are called as the atrioventricular canals also called as the av canals which help in formation of the bicuspid and the tricuspid wall okay these help in the flow of blood from the atrium to the ventricle now the second step is the aortico pulmonary septum rotates and fuses with the muscular ventricular septum this is very confusing so what happens is this is the aortico pulmonary septum this septum first rotates and then fuses with the muscular interventricular septum so how does it fuse it fuses with the help of membranous interventricular septum there is a formation of membranous interventricular septum which is shown in this diagram c membranous interventricular septum okay so there is formation of membranous interventricular septum closing the interventricular foramen the interventricular foramen is closed because of the membranous interventricular septum so this is how the ventricular septum is formed okay now the growth of the endocardial cushion we know the endocardial cushion plays a important role in the atrial septation as well and it even plays a vital role in the ventricular septum it forms the membranous portion of the interventricular septum and also helps in atrial septation okay now what about the ventricular septal defect also called as the vsd these are the most common congenital cardiac anomaly okay this usually occurs in membranous interventricular septum when there is a defect in formation of the membranous interventricular septum there is ventricular septal defect we'll talk about this in the later pathology module 
Now let's talk about the formation of outflow tract and valve development. The neural crest cells, these and the endocardial cells migrate, okay? They migrate and form the truncal and the bulbar ridges, which spiralizes and fuses to form the aorticopulmonary septum. These aorticopulmonary septum are formed by the neural crest cells and the endocardial crest cell migration. Okay, these truncal and bulbar ridges which form the aorticopulmonary septum leads to the formation of the outflow tract which are the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk. Now what happens when there is any kind of defect in these migrations? So there are conotruncal abnormalities, truncal, conotruncal, okay, conotruncal abnormalities which are associated to the failure of these neural crest cells. Now what happens is, there may be transposition of great vessels, there may be tetralogy of phallet, or there may be persistence of truncus arteriosus. We'll cover all of these in the congenital defect module in great depth, okay? Now let's talk about the valve development. So how is the aortic or the pulmonary valve developed or from which structure is it developed? It's derived from the endocardial cushion of the outflow tract. Am I clear? The neural crest cells and the endocardial cells form the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk. The aortic and the pulmonary valve are formed by the endocardial cushion of the outflow tract. And the mitral and the tricuspid valve, as I told you, is formed from the AV canal. Is formed from the AV canal and from the fused endocardial cushion. Now the different kinds of valvular anomalies may be stenotic, that is stenosis, regurgitant or atritic. They can be mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitants, atrial, that is tricuspid atresia or displaced. If the, valvular, if the valves are displaced, then it is called as Epstein anomaly. All of these will be covered in the pathology module. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.